So now that we have a grasp on how to use phylogenetic trees, uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about taxonomy. So taxonomy is a system that we use to classify organisms into taxa or taxonomic groups. Um, the system we use is sometimes called the Linnaean system, named for Carolus Linnaeus, a Swedish, nat Swedish naturalist who developed the system um, and who is remembered as the father of modern taxonomy. Uh, once evolutionary relationships have been worked out, once the phylogenies have been um, sort of illustrated for us, we can classify organisms into hierarchical groups, each one more specific than the one above it, uh, so that any organism belongs to um, a broad, the broadest classification group, uh, a domain, and then narrows down into a kingdom, uh, followed by a phylum, a class, an order, a family, a genus, and finally, a species. Linnaeus also introduced binomial nomenclature, which is the naming system under which an organism is called by its genus and species, otherwise known as its scientific name. So there is a very specific way in which we use scientific names. So genus is capitalized, as you see here, and the species name is not. Um, however, both are italicized, so you can see some examples here, Canis lupus, Homo sapiens, Daphnia magna. In all of these, you see that same format, so capital letter for the genus, lowercase for species, and of course the whole thing is in italics. Um, frequently, the genus name is abbreviated, especially when the organism is widely known or discussed um, as in the case of things like model organisms. So if we look at um, C. elegans, for example, the genus name for C. elegans is Cynorhabditis. So you can imagine if you are a researcher and you're working on this particular nematode and you are writing about it and you're discussing it on a daily basis, it's a whole lot easier to do away with all of this and just call it C. elegans. The same thing can be said for E. coli, a ubiquitous bacterium, a common model organism. It's found all over the place. The genus name in this case is Escherichia coli, which as you can see is much easier if we just take all that out and just call it E. coli. So that's a little bit about how we go about naming organisms. So let's take a closer look here at the taxonomic groupings for our familiar family dog. So you've got the domain as the broadest group here, leading into kingdom, and then phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and then finally subspecies. We'll take a little bit closer look at how this works on the last slide here. Let me zoom in a bit. All right, so you'll notice that the domain is by far the broadest group. The domain for our family dog is eukarya. So in this clade, you have all organisms that are considered eukaryotes. So here's a nice selection of eukaryotic organisms. As we move down to um, the kingdom level, so dogs belong in the kingdom Animalia. So who falls out of the grouping here? Because we're getting more uh, specific as we move down the line. We lose our plant. So plant falls out and now we just have animals included. So as we move down to the more uh, specific or less inclusive phylum level, now we're in chordata. So we lose our invertebrate, the insect falls out, and so now we just have fish, uh, human, cat, fox, jackal, wolf, and dog. From here, we go down to class. So we're looking at mammals, so class mammalia. We lose our fish. Now we've got just mammals included in this group, familiar organisms, human, cat, fox, jackal, wolf, dog. Next we have order, so even more specific, we're talking about carnivora. So you've got cats included, but you lose the human, so humans don't belong in that particular order. So 
we now have cats, foxes, jackals, wolves, and dogs. De next we go down to family canidae, which is going to lose the cat. So the cat drops out. We've got fox and dog and relatives. Then we finally narrow it even further down to genus, which in this case is canis, the, gen uh, the genus that includes jackals, wolves, and dogs. At the species level, we've got canis lupus, but we're still just at wolf and dog. We're trying to get all the way down to our familiar family dogs, so we actually go all the way down to the level of subspecies, so canis lupus familiaris, and there is our family dog. Subspecies is actually an even more specific division beneath species, which indicates that although members of the species, so in this case wolf and dog, could um, breed and produce viable offspring, um, they're separated by other types of, of factors. In this case, the fact that wolves are not domesticated, but dogs are domesticated. So that makes them um, a subspecies. But the idea is to just see the way that these evolutionary relationships and genetic relationships and even physical characteristics uh, allow us to classify organisms from the very specific level um, all the way up to very general um, or very inclusive group like domain.